I mean, look as an example of Obamacare. Obamacare passed in March 2010. Exactly in March, it'll be 10 years ago. And at the time, Republicans swore, swore that at the first opportunity, they would repeal it. That it was absolutely unmitigated disaster. That they would have to get rid of it. They had their chance. They had the chance. They had the Senate, the House, the presidency. They did nothing. Have they offered an alternative to Obamacare? No. Have they offered a solution to privatize American health care? No. There is nobody out there arguing for less government involvement in health care. Nobody out there arguing for less government involvement in the economy. It just doesn't exist. And there's no optimistic voice out there saying, stop being afraid. This country could be great again. Be great again by engaging with the world. It can be great again by stopping the stupid wars, by trading with the world, by investing, by leaving individuals alone to invest. The landscape has completely changed. On the right, never did I imagine that you would see the rise of the kind of racism, anti-Semitism that you're seeing from groups on the alt-right, the groipers, the alt-rightists, the nationalists, the whole variety of different groups. The, the uh, what was it, bronze a, a bronze age perverts of the world. Now, it might have always been in the corners of the internet, but what has happened over the last three years is it's come out of the corners of the internet and smack in the middle of public life. At the same time as the left has gone wacky left. People have indeed lost any sense of meaning, any sense of purpose. They are not grounded on a vision, not a vision of America, not a vision for their lives, not a vision for the future. So I find it difficult to find reason to be optimistic. I find it difficult to see where this ends up other than in disaster. But there is an opportunity here. There is a void. There is a real vacuum. There was a void and a vacuum 10 years ago with the Tea Party. But it's much greater today. Nobody even pretends to be an ideologue anymore. Nobody even pretends to care about the founding fathers of this country anymore. Nobody even pretends to defend Americanism anymore. And this is the opportunity. An opportunity that, if not seized, will be taken advantage of by the worst elements in this country. And I consider the worst elements in the country because I consider the only elements that actually can win in this country, those worst elements on the right, not on the left. I think the left is doomed, just like in England, is doomed to fail. But the worst elements on the right in America are much worse than the worst elements on the right in England. At least they're much more popular in this country. Somebody on the chat mentions M M Michelle Malkin. Michelle Malkin is an example of the worst elements on the right. She is a vicious hater of everything this country represents. And I have to admit with some shame that after 9-11, there were times when I linked to her, I respected her views. But she's turned out to be one of those vicious haters of Americanism, of individualism, she has turned out to be a true xenophobic racist who supports the anti-Semitism of the Goypers, the, the, the Nick Fuentes' group, attacking, <laughs> attacking everybody, everybody on the right who is not a racist like them.
Hey. So there's a vacuum. And I'll end my monologue with this and then take your super chat question. There's an opportunity to fill that vacuum. There's an opportunity to fill that vacuum with the right ideas, with the ideas of Americanism, with ideas of the founding of this country, the ideas of Ayn Rand, the ideas of capitalism, the ideas of individualism. Nobody today even pretends to stand for the individual. Nobody today even pretends to stand for capitalism. Nobody today even pretends to stand with the founding fathers. This is our calling. This is our opportunity. We are the only voice of sanity out there. And whether, you know, who exactly stands up to embrace this challenge, I don't know. But this is the opportunity to get our voice heard. Opportunity to stand out above the nonsense. An opportunity to engage those Americans, as few as they may be, who still have that American sense of life, who still have that American belief in the Constitution, in the Declaration. Hopefully, Brad Thompson can do a lot with his new book on the Declaration, because in my view, the Declaration of Independence is the most important political document in all of human history. And it is, it is the core of what this country stands for. It is the core, the moral, political core of what America is, what it was at least, and what it can become. It is that spirit of the Declaration of Independence that we must resurrect, that we must remind the American people of, that we must give a voice to. And we have no competition in this because nobody else knows it. Nobody else cares. Nobody else is doing it. The battles on the right are between the religionists, the, the, the fascists, the nationalists, the racists, the, all a bunch of statists, every single one of them. There is no secular, pro-right, pro-happiness voice on the landscape. And they're all, everybody out there is wacky. We're rational and sane. I hate to say normal. Happy, well adjusted, one would hope. We have the ideas. We have reason, logic, history, facts on our side. This is the time to engage. The longer we wait, the hotter it will be. I said this during the, during the uh, tea party, that if we lose, it'll be bad. And we lost, and it's bad. <laughs> and it's only getting worse, and it's only getting more urgent, and it's only going to get more difficult, and it's only going to get more desperate. So if you don't stand up now, when are you going to stand up? If you don't start fighting now, when are you going to start fighting? And don't leave the fighting to the alt-right and to the nationalist and to the weirdos and freaks and crazies and immoral, nutty nihilists of all kind. Don't leave the battle to them. I said the alt-right. Somebody says, the alt-right are atheists. I know the alt-right are. Well, the... The, 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 they're not exactly atheists, they're more agnostics. They're nihilists. I didn't say the alt-right were religious, I said the alt-right, comma, religionist, comma, the rest of them. They're all somewhat distinct, but they're all the same at the same time, in the sense that they all hate America. They all hate your values, they all hate individualism. That's the thing they hate the most. And it's global. It's not just in America, but in America it is obvious. And why, my view is, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that America, that, that China has become more authoritarian, one of the reasons China has become more authoritarian is because America is in decline. One of the reasons 
Europe is becoming more authoritarian is because America is in decline. America was, was, in spite of itself, the shining city on the hill, the model for all countries around the world. Americanism, American individualism is something countries, people, individuals all over the world aspired to be. Not fully, not completely understanding it, but they wanted to be like Americans. That is going. And as it goes, the world will sink. As it's going, the last hope for humanity globally is going away. You can see that in Hong Kong, who are so desperate to get America somehow on their side that they sing the national anthem and they bring American flags. And what does America do? Eh, Congress passes some resolution that begrudgingly Trump signs, but almost nobody mentions a thing about them. So yes, I am pessimistic. Yes, I think it's an opportunity. Yes, I hope you all are inspired to act on this opportunity because there won't be second chances. They probably weren't 10 years ago. They certainly are not any today. And I hope there are people listening out there and who take this to heart and who act on it. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com you're on book show and um and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going i'm not sure when the next